Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Bill Bailey. And I'm Sally. And welcome to Happy Gospel Church in Bradenton, Florida. We're so glad that you're tuned in today. I don't believe it's by accident that we have connected during this time. I believe God has something special for you during today's broadcast. And listen, we'd love to connect with you. We have services here at Happy Gospel every Sunday at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., Wednesdays at 7 p.m., and you still have time to join us this morning if you'll get ready and come on to church today. Well, listen, today's program is gonna be special. Why don't you call someone, let them know that we're on the air, connect with us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. We're on all of the platforms and we'd love to stay connected with you. God bless you. I'll see you in just a few moments. that runs through my veins there's a future that runs through my veins and there's nothing on earth that can stand in my way there's a future that runs through my veins oh everywhere i go on this road high and low everywhere i go with you i won't be afraid this is my hope Come what may, everywhere I go with you. There's a spirit I cannot contain. There's a spirit I cannot contain. And that same power that raised Jesus up from the grave. That same spirit I cannot contain. Oh, everywhere I go on this road, high and low. Everywhere I go with you I won't be afraid It's my hope, come what may Everywhere I go with you Everywhere I go with you Your breath upon these bones Your fire in my soul The kingdom is my home so I won't walk alone Oh, everywhere I go on this road I end up everywhere I go with you I won't be afraid, this is my hope Come what may, everywhere I go with you Oh, everywhere I go on this road I end up everywhere Afraid is my hope, come what may, everywhere I go with you, everywhere I go with you, everywhere I go, I go with you. Hebrews chapter 12, if you're there, say yes. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verses 2 and 3 are our key scriptures, so listen closely. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, somebody say that line with me again, who for the joy that was set before him, say it again, who for the joy that was set before him. What did Jesus do? He endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. 
Verses 3 and 4. For consider him who endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. You have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Being the first day of our first Sunday gathering of 2021, this morning I'm preaching on, about resetting in our life. Every year, the new year brings about an opportunity for us to get our priorities in order, an opportunity for us to, to reset or recalibrate, so to speak. And yet, how many of you know that's easier said than done? Because this is January the 3rd on our calendar. Some of you made commitments on New Year's Eve, which was Thursday. You've already broken those commitments by today. I'm not going to eat or I'm not going to drink anything sugary. And you may have had the best of intentions and you just simply forgot about it when that sweet tea came along. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Or maybe you weren't going to say a certain thing. Or maybe you were going to try to change some habits and exercise more. And yet, suddenly now, a few days later, you meant well, but yet it didn't work. The reset was more difficult than you had thought. And yet the Bible tells us here that we should look to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, the example for our life. And he said that he did this, he endured the cross and despised the shame because of the joy that was set before him. Everybody say that together. The joy that was set before him. Now, Father, would you speak to us by the Holy Spirit? Help us to hear clearly everything you have to say today. Help me to simply be the conduit or the vessel, but God, may your word be heard, and Lord, may your glory be seen here. And we'll be careful to give you the praise in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen and amen. You may be seated this morning. Most theologians believe that Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. And Paul defines here Jesus as being the author and the finisher of our faith. It's a reminder to me that whatever God begins, he always has an ending. Matter of fact, if we understood the omnipresence of God and the omnisciency of God and the omnipotency of God, we would know that the end is already before the beginning. For example, in the Gospel of John, the scripture begins by, In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It's a reminder to you and I that the creative God that we serve, let there be and there was, Genesis begins. We understand that He is already at the end before he, we ever experience the beginning. He is the author and the finisher. The rest of your Bible talks about him being the, the, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. That is the God that we serve here today. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the same God that you and I serve here in this 21st century. And when Paul writes here and says that he is the author and the finisher of our faith, it gives me some great theological understanding and text in knowing that, that he will finish that which he has begun. And we believe that as we see the book of Revelation. But beyond just the book of Revelation, in our own personal life, it gives us some great encouragement that God is not done with any of us in this room right now. That today you are a different man or woman than you were five years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago. And some of you, if they would have told you a few years ago that you would be worshiping on a Sunday morning in 2021 in a Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled, tongue-talking, crazy church like Happy Gospel, you'd have looked at them and said, that will never happen. You've lost your ever-loving mind. But look at you today. You are worshiping. Worshiping God in a Holy Ghost, tongue-talking, spirit-filled church. You're just a little bit crazy. 
The Bible calls us a unique people called out of darkness into his marvelous light. That he's the author and the finisher of our faith. At this point in my life, I'm a different person than I was when I was in my 20s and 30s and even in my 40s. That there are perspectives that I have now in my life that I did not have years ago. Things that I said I would never do, I have suddenly done. Come on, don't look at me so holy. You're all like that. We all are. It's called growing. It's called maturing. There are aisles at Walgreens and CVS that I never knew existed until I hit 50. I didn't understand the purpose for them. And now they suddenly become relevant. There are pains in my body that I never used to have in my 20s and 30s. And I would laugh at old folks that would talk about them. I was watching a TV network last night that uh, caters to, to seasoned adults like myself and many of you. And I was watching them and uh, watching this particular network and the commercials came on and they had this special ointment that they were advertising to take away aches and pains. I used to never look at those commercials as relevant, but suddenly I thought, I might want to check that website out. But yet before I got to this stage in my life, God was already there. God was already there. People would ask in in the year 2001, I believe it was, they would ask, they would say things like this, where was God on 9-11? Could I tell you, God was already there. Where was God on Christmas morning in Nashville, Tennessee, downtown? God was already there. And you may look back at the events of your life and think, where was God at such and such a time? Could I tell you, God was there all along. And the reason you are still here today, and the reason those of you that watch me by television and online this morning, the reason you're still in your right mind today is because God did did not leave you alone in the crises of your life, but the omnipresent, omnipotent, all-knowing, omniscient God, He was there. Somebody say amen. And so this morning when we talk about God being there and being with us, it's a reminder that He is the author and the finisher of our faith. So what about the cross? What about the means? This morning on television, we aired the service from one of of the messages from Family Worship Center in Baton Rouge where I preached. and, And in so doing, I laid out the two lines in the message of the cross that Jesus is the source of everything we receive from God. And secondarily, the cross is the means and the only means by which we receive all of these things from God. And, and so when we believe in Christ and him crucified, the cross reminds us that it was a necessary uh, atonement for the remission of our sins. But yet when Jesus was on the cross, I love the line that Ronnie Henson and Mike Payne wrote in that great song, I was on his mind. That when Jesus was on the cross, he looked forward in time 2,020 years approximately or 2,021 and he saw you and I right now that Jesus could see where we were. He could feel our pain. He understood our need. That when he was on the cross, what projected him and propelled him to complete that work is that he saw you and I, his children, redeemed as sons and daughters of the Most High God. I love a line in another song that says, it wasn't the nails that held Jesus to the cross, but it was love that held Jesus to the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I had difficulty understanding that love until Caleb came into our life. And as a parent, then I understood 
the magnitude of that love. That God so loved you and I. He saw us as his children. None of us are orphans today outside of the family of God. We are saved today and part of the family. And I'm going to remind you today, God doesn't have any stepchildren or half-children. We are all redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this morning, he looked ahead in time and he saw you and I who for the joy that was before him, he was willing to look beyond the pain and the agony of a cross experience. You'll give me some latitude for about 60 seconds. I want to remind you, it was a horrific experience. Jesus understood that when he was in the garden of Gethsemane and he prayed, Father, if there be any way for this cup to pass from me, let it pass. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus was determined to fulfill his mission and the will of his Father, but yet the humanity of Jesus, the Son of Man part of Jesus, labored before his Father saying, if there's any way for this to be done another way, let it be. Because of the horrific the cruelty, the violence, and the horrible death that Jesus endured upon that cross. Don't sell out salvation so cheap. Your Savior paid a great price for yours and mine salvation. The blood of Jesus was shed at a great price for our redemption here today. You were not redeemed with corruptible things, but rather by, the Bible calls it, the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Never trample upon that blood, but understand the price that was paid for it, and it was a precious gift from God's only Son that would provide redemption for all of humanity, for whosoever would believe they could be saved today because of that blood. A crown of thorns upon his head that's pierced even to his skull. Nails in his hands and in his feet. The Bible talked about the asphyxiation and talks about how that, that, that as his body literally crumbled, trying to, to breathe and in so doing, killing him all at the same time. We understand from a, from a biblical standpoint that, that really he did not die that death at the hands of those soldiers that administered his crucifixion, but rather he freely gave his life as a ransom for each and every one of us. But it was a horrible depiction. Now, I've been to many traditional churches, and you have too. Or you've seen where they would have a pulpit and a church stage, and behind them they would have an old-fashioned picture of Jesus hanging on the wall on a cross. But can I tell you, in reality, if you truly had an accurate depiction of what Jesus looked like upon the cross, you would never show it publicly because it was a vile death that Jesus endured. Mel Gibson, the producer, director of The Passion of the Christ, remarked in a press conference when he was being asked, why would you shoot a picture like The Passion of the Christ and rate it R? And he said, because Jesus did not die a PG-rated death. It was an awful experience. But yet, that's how much your heavenly Father loves each and every one of us here today. Romans 5.8 is really Paul's John 3.16 when he says the love of God has been demonstrated toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us because he loved us. In other words, that God didn't start loving you when you suddenly turned your life over to Jesus. God loved you and I so much that while we were yet in our sin, while we were without God, while we, we were in the ravages of sin and degradation, the love of God was ministered toward us. Be careful how you point your finger at somebody in an ungodly, unwayward way because God sees them and he loves them. He loves them with an everlasting love and he loves you in the midst of your sin as well.
Amen. And so this morning when we talk about that he, for the joy that was set before him, he did these things quickly. Number one, he endured the cross. Somebody say he endured the cross. He endured that cross. Luke chapter 9, verse 23 and 24, listen to Jesus. He said unto them, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, the same shall find it. Luke 9, 23, listen, Jesus, he says this, he said to them all, turn to your neighbor and tell him he's talking to every one of us. He said, if any man wants to follow after Christ, how many, how many want to follow after Jesus today? Let me see your heads. Be careful what you ask for, because he said the first thing you got to do is deny yourself. You got to realize it's not about you. Now listen, this is the first year of 2021. I want this to be a great year for you. But most churches are going to preach sermons talking about how this is going to be your best year yet. You are the man. You are the woman. You are a champion. And it's all about you and it's all about me. When in reality, Jesus says if we truly are going to follow after Christ, it can never be about us. It's got to be about him. You got to learn to deny yourself. Now I don't know about you. I don't like denying myself. About 10 o'clock at night when I'm st sitting in my lazy boy recliner and I feel that tug and that pull to the, to the freezer. Don't look at me so holy. I feel that tug and that pull. That chocolate chip mint ice cream. And then one day I was saying, Lord, it can't be all my fault. It can't be all my fault. I said, Sister Bailey bought it. Come on, if Eve could blame Adam, I can blame Eve. It's, it's difficult to deny yourself. I mean, who would ever want to drink tea without sugar in it? That's got to be the unpardonable sin. There's nothing better than a good glass of cold, sweet tea over ice. It's incredible. It's what they're going to serve at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Greg, I know you don't like it, but get ready. You better learn now. When you get to heaven, they're going to be serving sweet tea as the drink of choice. But Jesus said if we're going to follow after him, we got to learn to deny ourselves. In other words, it's not about us. It's not about my life. He said, deny yourself and then do what? Take up your cross. And I love this line because Jesus must have been talking directly to me and thinking about me when he wrote this and said this. He said, take up your cross daily. Somebody holler daily. In other words, we've got to learn to deny ourselves and take up the cross daily in our life because living for Jesus is an everyday experience. Because some days I really do well. I mean, some days I read my Bible, pray. I mean, I'm on fire for God. I got what Tommy Barnett calls the glow rays in my life. You know what that is? That's the G-L-O-W-R-A-Y-S. I mean, I just feel like I've been with Jesus. People are all around me saying, look at him. He's been with Jesus. That's a godly man. That's our pastor. That's Pastor Bailey. That man, that, that's a man of God right there. I love my pastor. And I thought I'd get a little better help than I am right now. I, man, that's... That's my pastor. He's been with Jesus today. But could I tell you, there's those other days. You've had them. There's those other days. Don't mess with me. Why'd you cut me off? And don't you dare, I'm already driving 80 miles an hour in the left lane on I-75, and you have the audacity to pull up and get right on my bumper, and I have nowhere to go. The devil is a liar. And I don't, I, I hate to admit this, I hate to be, be so human to some of you, but I want to move over in the other lane to let them get by me, just so then I can get behind them and speed up and get right behind them. Don't you get on my tail. Amen. 
That's my pastor. And then those people that, 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 that they got to run right past you just to get to the traffic light quicker than you get to it. We, we, we're both going to get there and have to stop. Get me so irritated. One day I wanted to do something. I just wanted to do something. I wanted to do something. But it didn't. But I wanted to. And thank God that I had some sort of resistance. Because when we both pulled up to that stoplight together, I realized it was somebody from the church. Hey, Pastor! You know, the world we're living in right now is pretty crazy. It seems like things change literally every day. But there's one thing that remains constant, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. God's Word says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So no matter what you're facing today, I want to encourage you that Jesus has an answer. He'll be a help, and He'll be a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I'd love to pray with you. There's a link at the bottom of the screen. Why don't you send me a note? Let me know how we could pray effectively for you. I'd love to hear from you. And then also, if you're ever in the Bradenton, Florida area, we're about 40 minutes below Tampa Bay, and we'd love to have you join us for one of our in-person services. We have three services currently, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., Wednesdays at 7 p.m., and if you're ever here, we'd love to meet you personally. Likewise, most of our Sunday services are streamed online live, and they're also archived. So you can go to Facebook or YouTube to our platforms, and you can find our services and watch us in person as well online. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I can't wait to see you again at this same time next week. Get the